We are going to be talking today about continuous delivery for Puppet Enterprise. Uh, we're going to be going over the design and the overall roadmap of the, uh, the solution. Um, we're not going to necessarily focus on like the visual design and things like that, although we will touch on that. Um, it's really about the, the design of the solutions that we're of the problems we're trying to solve for you, as well as talking about the challenges that we see you facing and how we're going to address them going forward. So it's not necessarily going to be the typical roadmap slide that you'll see from vendors. We're actually going to dive into each of the, the problem areas and really dive deeply into how we're thinking about it. Uh, I am Carl Kamm, a product manager here at Puppet. I focus on our continuous delivery solutions uh, for Puppet Enterprise. Okay. And I'm Kat Rayburn. I'm a UX designer, and I work on CD for PE, as we call it. Okay. Um, so show of hands, how many of you have heard of continuous delivery for PE prior to today? Good. All right. Glad to hear that. Um, all right, so why did we build this? Why did we set out to solve these, these sets of problems and what problems are they? Um, the core problem here is that IT is hard. Like it just is. It's hard to coordinate all of the changes that need to be made to the infrastructure across all of the different teams that need to make those changes, validate that they're safe, but still get them out quickly. Your challenge is to be able to keep up with the business while still keeping the lights on. And that is fundamentally hard. It is fundamentally at odds. Uh, your company is telling you, we've got to move faster, and you do. Like The company has to move faster. That's just how the industry is moving. If you don't keep up, you die. Uh, but at the same time, you do have to keep things running. You can't break things as you move faster. So how do you do that? Well, oh, where's the acceptance slide? That's all right. Um, so as I talk to a lot of you, you talked a lot about how you structure your teams. On the simplest level, we've got team structures on the left that tend to be uh, more small teams. You own all of the infrastructure. You own all of the delivery processes. You keep the infrastructure in your head. It's really easy for you to assess the impact of a change and know exactly what's going to happen downstream because you just literally know it. But when you get into the middle world, where you have you know, uh, you know, moderate size, large teams, you have to be able to scale that out. Well, you can't keep yourself as the core puppet team as the central point of control. Because at that point, you become a bottleneck. Now things aren't moving fast. So what you all aspire to, and some of you have actually achieved, is the ability to provide automation as a service to other teams to be able to leverage themselves. So you'll have the SAP team. You'll have the DB team. Um, you'll have the, those various infrastructure and application teams owning their own delivery process and using the services in Puppet Enterprise and CD for PE to be able to uh, provide that as a service to those teams and have uh, automation content that they can all share between them. Now, again, some of you actually achieved this, uh, but I find that most of you aspire to this. Um, for those that are kind of in the, the middle area, can you kind of like raise your hand if that applies to you? OK, great. Um, on the right side, I, I see a lot more for highly regulated and really large government industries. Uh, you, you have a whole new challenge here. Not only do you have to provide services and make sure that teams can move at velocity and maintain your ability to ma make sure that things are safe and the lights stay on, but you have this new area of control where you have to keep up with the audit um, and compliance rules that InfoSec and the audit team are, are pushing down on you and saying, you have to make sure that this happens. But those teams that you're, the, the, the infrastructure and application teams, they don't necessarily have to comply with that, but you have to make sure that, that they're still doing it. How do you maintain that kind of safety while still giving them the velocity that they need? Well, a lot of you, of course, would say, that's what automated testing is for, right? Just one problem with that. You're not doing it. Um, and that's OK, because it's hard. Automated, uh, automated testing, true coverage of acceptance testing of every change that is going to go out to your infrastructure is fundamentally hard. You have a lot of different frameworks to use. I mean, just within Puppet, you have RSpec Puppet, you have Beaker, you now have Litmus. Um, and now, how does Bolt fit into all of this? Um, it's, but more importantly, it's not necessarily an expertise thing uh, most of the time. It's time. You don't have the time. What is the ROI of building out acceptance testing for every change across every service that you have in your infrastructure versus all the other stuff that you have to do? 
And what ends up happening is you say, look, manual testing gets us most of the way there. Things like no-op gets us most of the way there. Things like linting and parser validation gets you pretty far. Are you really going to take the time to invest in true acceptance testing across everything? Probably not. Some of you have, but most of you don't. Um, and that's okay. So what we really need are a set of tools that'll help you understand what the impact of a change is gonna be and really understand whether or not it's safe while not having to uh, drop everything else and spend months investing in building out your acceptance tests. And that is where I'm gonna hand off to Kat to talk about how to do that. Hi, everyone. Um, so like I said, I'm a UX designer, which means that sort of broadly speaking, um, it's my job to make your job easier. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we're designing uh, continuous delivery for PE to do that. That's why it gets shortened. It's way too long. Um, so anyway, uh, no one should need a PhD in puppetnomics to get a simple change made. Yeah, there's not a single laugh on that. That is the last I, time I am stealing a joke from you. I was gonna use it in the keynote yesterday and I'm glad I didn't now, thank you. <laughs> See, well, I took the fall for you. Thank you. All right, anyway. So uh, the self-service model, um, it's just not going to work if organizations, for organizations if it just requires a lot of investment and expertise from these distributed teams. Um, so uh, as part of developing a design strategy for cd for pe um, Carl and I have done uh, some user research with PE users that are trying to open up their puppet code to distributed teams, and we heard a lot of pain around complicated processes. Um, when the processes were complex, lots of steps, development teams got frustrated. Um, this is really particularly true for those that only make changes once a month. Like, they for sure do not remember what they did last month. Um, they may require a lot of hand-holding, a lot of time from a core team. Um, and I think in the worst case scenario that we talked to, we had uh, one team that just said, you know what, we gave up. Like, we just do everything ourselves now, again. Um, and it really shouldn't have to be that way. Um, so I started with ease of use because that is really close to my heart. Um, and that's kind of why I come to work every day. Um, but this is why cd for p PE comes to work every day. See, that is a really hard acronym. I never realized yeah, how you're hard right. an acronym gotta fix that. is. I'm gonna ditch that. All right, um, so this is the core problem that we are trying to solve. Ops teams need a system that allows distributed teams to get their code to production as soon as it's ready, while still protecting mission critical systems from misconfiguration. So let's talk about the first part for, for a minute, giving distributed ops teams an independent path to production. Um, so when maintaining velocity is important, waiting for a core puppet team to merge and uh, deploy code to each puppet environment is just a non-starter. Um, these teams just won't use puppet to automate their area of responsibility. Um, and if they're not using puppet, that just limits uh, our ability to standardize and it means there's more tooling to track state and compliance. And a single path to production can block teams in other ways. If we have uh, one module that needs to bake in a pre-production environment for a while, um, that can block other modules that are ready for deployment right now. So we designed uh, cd for pe to support this independent path. Each module has its own pipeline, allowing teams to test the code independently of other teams. Um, they can even run an impact analysis on the code prior to deployment. So now, if one team needs more time to fix a bug, they're not blocking other teams that are ready to go. Um, so if your teams have siloed infrastructure, you can separate them out further by providing them with different workspaces. Um, and a workspace, like conceptually, it's a little like a team drive or a project folder. Um, it's a chunk of content, in this case, control repos, PE instances, and modules that a specific team needs access to. Um, if you have uh, teams using different control repos or PE instances, it's a good idea to set them up with different workspaces. So they're not um, you know, combing through uh, a whole bunch of data that doesn't apply to them to get to the little piece of it that does. Uh, as well, if you provide PE as a service, 
then a workspace is a really easy place for users without a lot of familiarity with PE to deploy code changes in. They don't really have to know a lot about the PE instance underneath the hood. Okay, so great. We're allowing distributed teams to contribute to our puppet code. Um, but those teams don't necessarily have the same expertise that you do or the same need to create the right process. So we know that we need a way for an expert to create essentially a reusable template for other teams to use in their pipeline. And um, this could really include anything. It could be security scans, it could be uh, automated tests or deployments. Um, so one of those team members can just grab this reusable workflow and drop it in their pipeline and boom, they're just ready to go. Um, and we're working on this. So I'm gonna let Carl do the big reveal, but uh, we are working on a way right now to codify and share these workflows. <coughs> Okay, so awesome. More people are contributing to Puppet Code. It's faster, it's easier, they're happy. But that really can't come at the expense of stability. And it definitely can't come at the expense of a core Puppet team's ability to sleep at night. Um, so let's talk about how we prevent everybody from just running amok with this newfound power. Okay, so uh, if you saw yesterday's keynote with Carl, um, you understand what a powerful tool impact analysis is. Um, and just to be clear, impact analysis is not a replacement for automated testing, and teams should still strive to do automated testing, um, but it can help bridge that gap. Impact analysis answers the question, if I deploy this code to these systems, what will happen? And this can uh, really help you identify when resources and nodes are being changed that you really didn't expect. Um, that can help with one thing we've heard about, which is when one team's changes affect servers or resources that are outside of their purview, that can be flagged before that ends up in production and taking down another team's servers. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. Likely not everyone in your organization should be allowed to deploy to production. Um, I'm not allowed to deploy to anything. Uh, so anyway, with, a, uh, with approvals, a team member such as myself can request a deployment, but it requires an approval for that change to actually be deployed. So again, one, of, one piece of this puzzle that we haven't yet gotten to for those um, government and highly regulated industries. Um, if your organization uses compliance policies, you'll want to make sure that any new code conforms. Um, same thing with security scans. You should be able to understand that that has been done um, before anything is, is to be deployed. Um, so one way to do this would be to create one of those reusable workflows that I just talked about. Uh, you create that workflow and you tell everybody this is exactly uh, what you have to use. Um, but if you have uh, teams that have their own processes, uh, their own expertise, you know, maybe that won't go over very well with them. Uh, it doesn't fit into their process. So we know that we need a way to verify that certain things have happened before allowing a code, to uh, code change to proceed. So we're calling this attestations. It's another thing uh, we're working on. And Carl will talk a little bit more about this in a minute. Um, so before I hand it back to Carl, there's just one more piece of the roadmap that I want to mention. Um, CD for PE is a young program. We just had our first birthday. And uh, like many young programs, we started out a little scrappy, maybe a little sparse, as you can see, and um, without a ton of design support. So anyone who has been around for the last year may notice that we're starting to look a little more grown up. Um, if you've noticed our visual design getting more refined, that's thanks to Aaron, our UI designer. And if you're finding it easier to use, that's yeah, at least a little bit sort of in part where I come in. Um, so that work is going to continue. And um, as you may have kind of already, already heard here, uh, this is really part of a puppet-wide focus. Um, we are devoting more effort to creating products that don't require you or everyone in your organization to be an expert in our software 
to get your work done. Um, and just on a personal note, um, I have worked in enterprise for much of my career. And enterprise software is just really not known for having a great user experience. Just, just not. Yeah, see, see that? People laughed at that. <laughs> that one's true. Um, so uh, I've been working um, during my career to change that. And I am just so incredibly excited that there are so many others at Puppet right now who feel the same way. So thank you. Thanks. Um, I, I do want to take the moment to say, though, uh, that the effect that you have had on our software's usability is not just in small part because of you. Um, so since Kat has joined the team, the usability and the design of the product has increased tremendously. And I want to take the time to thank you. <laughs> All right, so that's where we've been. That's where we've been focused on. So what comes next? So I'm happy to say that in a few weeks, we're going to be releasing 3.0 of continuous delivery for PE. And there's a couple of goals that we have that we're, we have for you. One is we really want to double down on helping you assess the impact of more of your Puppet code changes. If you've been around for the last year, you know that since impact analysis was released, it really focused on just your Puppet code. Uh, so it just supported your roles, profiles, Puppet files, manifests. Um, but it didn't do anything for your Hira data. So if you changed the Hira value, uh, you didn't really get any, any impact uh, from, of that. Well, we're now going to fix that. As you saw in the keynote yesterday, that's a new feature that we're done building, and it will be released in 3.0. Um, the other thing that we're going to help you with uh, is helping you assess the impact of your modules. We've actually already shipped that, but we're putting it under the 3.0 banner. Um, if, again, if you've been around, you know that we ship every two weeks. So when we have a feature that's done, we just get it out to you. Um, we're also going to help you automate your release process. We've heard a lot from, from you saying, hey, it's great that CDPP has these prescribed workflows, but I've been doing Puppet for a while, and I really don't want to drop everything that I've been doing in order to do it your way. Um, that's just too big of a hurdle. So we need to meet you where you are. Uh, and then we're also going to help you integrate Puppet changes into your existing change management process. This is kind of a lofty goal, and it means something different for everybody else. I'll dive into the details of this in a bit. Uh, and then we're also going to give you pipelines as code. I know, finally. Uh, so this is a, that's one I'm really excited about. So let's talk about impact analysis. Um, I've already kind of talked to you about this. Uh, impact analysis for Hira is going to be really big. Hira is a super powerful tool. Um, but there's those times where you change something, or worse, somebody else changes something in a pull request, and you're like, what the hell is this going to do? It's really, really hard. Now, with impact analysis, we'll just tell you. If you were to merge this, if you were to deliver it, this is exactly what systems are going to be affected, what exactly what resources are going to be affected, and how they're going to be affected. And the way that we've designed the user interface means that you can not just focus on the list of nodes, which may become wieldy after a few thousand, um, but you focus on the, with the configurations that are going to be changed, the unique ways those configurations are going to change, and what nodes those uh, unique changes are going to occur on, really giving you the focus that you actually care about, which is what configurations are going to change. And then being able to do this within a module is extra powerful. What, up until this point, you've had to choose. Do I do impact analysis, or do I do module delivery pipelines? Considering those are our two marquee features, you shouldn't have to choose. And now you don't have to. Now you can do impact analysis within your modules, so you can have an independent release process for the, those other infrastructure teams, and they can do their own impact analysis for their changes and have a sense of confidence. Custom deployment policies is one that I'm really excited about. This goes to the point that you all have your bespoke release processes. You know how to work with Puppet if you've been a Pup PE customer for a while, and yet we're coming in with CD for PE and saying, great, forget all that, do it our way. That's not going to work. Um, so with custom deployment policies, you're going to be able to write your own deployment policy. Say, this is how we get code out. This is how we build a module. This is how we ship it to Artifactory. Here's how we want to update Hira. Here's a ticket we want to go create in Jira. Whatever your process is, you should be able to automate that with a deployment policy so that anyone in your organization can leverage that with a click of a button. They shouldn't have to know your bespoke way in order to get changes out. That's what we're going to be delivering. Now, the first version um, is going to expose a lot of our internal APIs. And you'll be able to write a bolt plan, essentially, to be able to leverage those APIs and create the orchestration uh, of whatever your deployment process is. 
I encourage you to try it and let us know where it doesn't work. Let us know what things, what extra functions you're going to need in order to be able to deploy, uh, to be able to write your bespoke process. However, we're giving you an escape hatch. One of the things you'll be able to do in your custom deployment policy is leverage bolt plans and bolt tasks that exist on a PE server. So, excuse me. So you'll be able to write your own tasks and plans that perform whatever function you need and be able to call out to that from within your deployment policy. I think it's going to be a really powerful feature for a lot of you. Can you get a show of hands? Uh, how many people would use this? OK, great. Pipelines as code uh, is definitely, I mean, I think you all are familiar with the concept. You are able to write, uh, in this case, a YAML file that will describe all of the steps, stages, and configurations for all of the pipelines within a given project, whether it be a control repository or a module, and store that in the same VCS repository as the module or the control repository. That gives you audit history. It means that it's easier to coordinate changes to the pipeline to support a change that you're making to your puppet code. Um, and it also uh, gives just, it's just nicer. It's easier to scale out. A lot of you have told me, Carl, I got 100 modules internally. I really don't want to click through a GUI 100 times in order to add them in C4P. That's fair. This will give you the ability to get around that. Dump this file into your VCS, push it up, you're done. So that's what's in 3.0. Uh, I'm really excited about this release. Uh, we started planning this about three to four months ago, and the engineering team has been full steam ahead on it, and it has been really incredible to see it come together. I can't wait to get it to you. But what comes after? Uh, you know, I'm a product manager. I tend to look at what, what can we get to. One of the things that I'm really playing with in, in my head is this idea of impact-based change approvals. A lot of you have talked to me about the need to assess what change is going to affect what other teams, what other infrastructure that you may not own. I had a story from a customer uh, not too long ago saying that they had this SAP team, and that SAP team turned off Puppet. And I was like, well, why would you do that? And they said, well, we would push out configuration changes, and one time we pushed out a bad configuration to their servers, and SAP went down. Well, the core Puppet team didn't get blamed for that. The SAP team got blamed for that. And no one really, no one didn't, you know, did anything wrong. It's just they didn't have the information they needed. What if we could take the impact analysis data that we have today and be able to correlate it to who owns what infrastructure is going to be affected and say, oh, you're making a change, but it's only affecting your infrastructure? Don't worry about it. Push it through. Oh, you're affecting PCI? Mm, no, we're sorry. We're going to need approval for that. Oh, you're affecting the SAP team? Well, all right, let's go get their approval from this and let them know what's going to happen. And with the new UI that we've built with impact analysis, that SAP team can have an assessment of what's going to happen without having to understand Puppet. Um, so I think that's going to be a really powerful feature. Uh, you know, it, it's something that we're really aspiring to and thinking about. The other thing is you know, ITSM, uh, RPA, Robotic Process Automation, uh, is something that a lot of you have talked about. Um, raise your hand if you need to create some sort of ticket, whether it's ServiceNow, Jira, Surewell, um, in order to get a change out to the infrastructure. That's a lot of hands. I am really sorry. Um, and I know, I say I'm sorry because it's really hard. And right now, that's an entirely manual process. You have to first go figure out what nodes are going to be affected, go create the ticket, figure out who's going to, who needs to approve it, then actually go do the work, then take the resulting report and go back to the ticket, put it in there, say, yay, everything did what we said it was going to do, and then close it out. Ugh, I bet you have better things to do. Um, so leveraging custom deployment policies we hope that we're going to be able to give you the functionality to be able to automate that process. What if you could say, deployment has started, go create a ServiceNow ticket. Go grab the impact analysis results and populate the body of the ticket with those, uh, with those results. Figure out who's going to be impacted by this change, what teams need to approve it, and set those as approvers on the ticket. Wait for all approvals to be done, and when it's done, finally deploy the changes. Grab the results from the puppet runs, and then populate the ticket with the resulting runs. Who would find that useful? Yeah. So that's something that we are aspiring to do. Um, we are going to building, the, we're in 3.0, we'll have the foundation required to be able to start tackling this. Shareable workflows is something that uh, I've been thinking a lot about as well. So a lot of you have talked to me about the need to dictate how other teams build their pipelines. And as I di dive into that, um, what you talk to me about is the need to basically say, I need to make sure that certain things are happening. I need to make sure that certain security scans are happening, that certain tests are happening. I need to make sure that certain approvals are happening. 
Um, but I'm going to make a guess that those teams don't like it when you dictate their delivery process. That's kind of counter to the point. Um, so how do we do that? How do we take the, your requirements and your expertise and be able to share that with those other teams so that they can leverage it? That's where Workflows comes in, and we're going to use Bolt for that. Uh, a shareable workflow is a Bolt plan that codifies a certain process, whether that's provisioning, testing infrastructure on your internal cloud, i.e. VMware, um, or whether it's you know, running, running a security scan with Qualys. Whatever it is that your organization needs in order uh, to do as a del in your delivery process, you should be able to codify that in a Bolt plan so that anyone can just click, add it to their pipeline, and now they've got your expertise. It will have certain parameters so that they have the knobs and levers needed uh, for whatever their workflow might, might hold. So we're actively working on this. And finally, we really want to achieve a premium experience in Puppet Enterprise. Continuous delivery for PE isn't a separate product. We really think of it as a, an additional tier on top of PE. It is PE, and it should be that premium experience of PE. But it's not, not yet. Um, not only does it not fully look like PE, um, it has its own identity management, its own RBAC, its own licensing, uh, has its own installation process, and I think we can do better. Um, so one of the things that we're gonna be really focusing on over the next year is first, unifying licensing so that you have one place to manage all your PE licenses. You have one place to go and manage all of your RBAC. You have one place to manage identity. I think it's ridiculous that you install CD for PE and the very first thing you do is create a user account. You just came from PE. Why can't you just log in with that credential? That's something that we wanna fix for you. And same thing with the installation experience. Uh, we really want it to be a simple experience. You install PE, and CD for PE is just ready to go. You just light it up. That's where we want to get to. I don't know how we're going to do it yet. I can't give you details on that, but we are still thinking about it. It is important to you, and therefore it's important to us. And that's everything. Thank you very much for your time.